United States Football League. I didn't make right. it to the NFL until I was 27. Most 27. guys made it at 21. Perseverance, man. You got to do what you got to do. You got to grind sometimes. That's right. That's right. But like you said, you know, everybody that even is around knows who you are just by face. But that's not what this is about. This is no. about a, an organization that you started in 2003. Yeah, it is. It's about my, you know, it's amazing. We go through a lot of stuff in life to get to certain places. And once you get to those certain places, it's up to you to help other people get to that place. Right. I, I'm, I'm very fortunate to go through a lot of different crazy things in my life based on how I was raised. Uh, uh, and, and that's part of our program, My Brother's Keeper, is recognizing that we all have stuff. Right. We all have right. things that take us in different directions. I'm very fortunate in, in 2003. To start, me and my wife, and I say fortune because I met her. She's a great lady. Me and my wife, together we opened My Brother's Keeper, um, a male mentoring program, a, a, a nonprofit to help, make, help really make a difference in our world. Exactly. And that's why I wanted to reach out to you. This is kind of a weird chain of events anyway. And uh, I'm in Rice Lake, Wisconsin, other side of the state. But your name was given to me. So I did a little bit of background. And obviously I did it a little bit of background on your career or thereabouts, but it wasn't about that for me. It was this, this man that just said, you know what, I'm going to do something different and started this organization in 2003, my brother's keeper in green Bay. And um, it has been an incredibly awesome, awesome deal. And I just wanted to, like I said, reach out to you. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, man. It's one of those things. It's an, it's an incredible program. And, and I say it's a program because it's a different program. And, and, I, and, you know, of course, it's mine. It's my baby. But it's a different program because of the approach. Right. And, and the approach is very similar. Uh, one of the greatest stories in my life happened. You know, you never know it's good till it winds out. But after playing in the USFL and playing in Canada and getting cut, I had nowhere to go. So I went back home to North Carolina. Um, and I was working in a factory uh, driving a forklift. No big deal. I mean, everybody has to make a living. Well, I was trying to figure it out because at an early age, I dreamed about being a professional athlete at six years old, man. Wrote the whole story of how it's supposed to unfold and it wasn't unfolding. <laughs> right, so, I get it. Yeah, and so I was back at home in North Carolina and I was working in this, in this factory. And uh, there was an article in the paper about me coming back home and everybody thought I was some type of hero. But in my head, I was a failure because I was back to a place I never thought I would go back to. Right. And, and, and so in life, there's different perspectives. And so when the greatest moments happened, it was like three o'clock in the morning. This old dude walked up to me and he said, aren't you? And I said, yeah, I'm Harry Sinner, the football player. He says, no, you're not. You're Harry Sinner, the forklift driver. And the reality of the moment was, yeah, I want to get mad and pound him. But sometimes it takes you a stranger to tell you the truth about who you are. Because I would no agree. Yeah, I guess, you know. Yep. And that's one of the things, I mean, I'm in, very involved with youth sports in this area. Um, I've coached and refed everything there is. And, and it seems like I'm on the board for a lot of different organizations. So it really hit home on the whole mentoring thing. And when, I, you know, I've got, I'm fortunate. I'm able to live, make a living doing some other stuff. And, but I do have a small business that just shut down because of the coronavirus. Mm. And all of a sudden I'm like, what do, what can I do? What can I do? And, and so I started looking around and I started just touching base with some of the people in the, uh, the people in this area that went above and beyond because of the coronavirus. So there's a lot of good things that have come out of it. Um, I'm very fortunate to meet you. I'm very fortunate, you know, but it's not again about the football career. It's about what you're doing with my brother's keeper. Well, and that's the thing, but it, uh, it's about that. But anytime you're dealing with anybody, it's about every part of their aspect. Right. It's about all their whole being and everything that they had to go through to make them become where they're at now. Right. And, and, and help them understand where they're at now. I mean, I, 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 it, totally it's agree. crazy. Because, like I said, all of us, man, and this, this, you know, you got families that are struggling because of no money. Families are struggling because all of a sudden they're in the house together. <laughs> you know, you right. get you, you got you got families that are struggling or, or are teenagers that are used to going and now they're there. So everybody now is caught up in having to change their thought process. Right. And, and I totally agree. Brothers Keeper in two thousand and three was just that helping our boys and men change their thought process. Mm -hmm. you know, why are you thinking the way you're doing? You know, 
a, a, a lot of times I know myself, I thought I used to think I hated change. Right. But what I realized is I didn't hate change. I hated how change was presented to me. Uh, I would agree. And I understand. And like I said, it's, uh, you know, doing what I do over here. Um, I don't care about the X's and O's. I care about these young men or young players becoming young men and, you know, just trying to use a platform of youth sports to be able to achieve some of it. Of course they want to have fun and, and everything else, but it's really about mentoring them away from the, you know, on and off the court. It's about what they learn. Right. And, and some of the things that we talk about now in our program, I call it the fundamentals. The right. fundamentals, like when we were young and athletes, we had to master the fundamentals. How right. to catch, how to run, how to get in a stance, how to do those things. Well, as we get older, it's still about the same thing. Are we men of integrity? Are right. we respecting ourselves? Are we living up to our standards? And there's a lot of guys out there um, that really want to but don't know how because they really weren't, wasn't taught. I agree. I know one of the things that I picked up just from watching the videos and all these other things uh, was about the IRS. Yeah, that's why it's, it's, it's I call it the foundation of everything. And, and, right. and I'm of faith. I believe in faith, but not everybody believes the way I do. And, and, and so until that happens, we have to do certain things that control ourselves. Right. And a lot of time uh, for guys, especially guys get caught up in and, and I, uh, most of us live by the duck, fully, duck philosophy. And what the duck philosophy is, if you ever seen a duck swim, what do you see? It's right. pretty floating on the water, but what's he doing on, underneath? He's kicking his ass off. He's paddling his butt <laughs> off. Yeah, he is paddling, man. And, that, and that's most guys. And, and, and so what we had to learn that we had to learn how to give guys a way to change their thought process by thinking about something different and, and thinking about it, you know, because in every decision that we make, there's a consequence. Right. Whether it's good or bad, there's a consequence. But right. we have to have the right thought process to go into the equation to give us the best opportunity to have the right thought process. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I call the IRS code is about helping guys build their house. Exactly. Build, build your house. Because in any house, you got to have a solid foundation. And for us, with the IRS code, integrity, our definition is knowing what the right thing to do is and being willing to do it at all times. Right. Because we know it, but are we willing to do it? And right, and that's the thing, you know, time. away from, yeah, away from the spotlight, away from people when, when the, you know, when you're home alone and making yeah. those right process or right choices, that's, that's the time. And, 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 so, and, and so that's our foundation, but what I help them understand is we all want to think like that, but there's things, to me, integrity is black and white, but unfortunately, most of us live in a gray area. Right. And the gray area is anytime we make any decisions first based on reasons, excuses, drugs, drinking, emotional feelings. Yeah. Anytime, anytime we go there first, we're going to go, oh, I didn't mean that to happen. Or there's something else that's going to get in the way that a lot of times we spend a lot of time worrying about things we can't control instead of controlling what we can. And that's well, the thought process. You're right. And that's where I think the mentoring comes in. They got somebody they can call. And, and, you know, when I was given your name, they were like, don't be surprised. You know, I just called the front desk and don't yeah. be surprised if Harry doesn't answer the phone. And so if this isn't some person that, you know, uses a, maybe a platform of a pro athlete or, or a celebrity that just rubber stamps it. This is your hands are on it every day. I'm 24 seven. I do. Right. I have another mentor, though he's been with us five years now. My wife works, we work together because the important part of me and my wife working together, she understands it. But while I'm in there telling the man certain thoughts, she's out there with the mom or the wife having the same type of thoughts, but right. speaking in a language that she can speak, that they can speak. So it's a, it, 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 you're coming, you're getting it from both ways, but not in a mean way. My job is to help each guy make the best decision he can. And then thinking about that decision, he's thinking about his lady, he's thinking about his kids, he's thinking right. about his job, he's thinking about all that he is. Because wherever you are, there you are. Right. And so our next part of integrity is in order to be a man of integrity, you also have to respect yourself and others. Right. And if There's... I say the definition of respect, what would you say that is? Uh, the, you know, I guess the part of respect is, is, you know, when I look at somebody and I respect them, it's, 
that I have taken, a, uh, I guess, the process in my head was I want to make sure that um, I give them respect. And, and the respect is for me um, that I can look at them and I know that I can trust them. and I can, you know, do whatever I can for them to be respected. But I also have to have respect for that person. And it's about living your life correctly. Uh, again, when 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 you're by yourself or or anything else, and that's and and, and, and those are all true. And, and those are and the thing about the, the, my brother's keeper, and it's weird because being an ex athlete, I, I you know we hear all the great things from Vince Lombardi. It was right. incredible. We had this incredible phrase, the Kiss philosophy. Yeah, keep it simple, stupid. Right. And what we do as man at times, I found out, is we elongate things. We take it where. And so in our program, our definition of respect is, and it sounds crazy, but teaching people how to treat you. Right, exactly. I teaching, get it. And, and because if I'm not a man of integrity, how am I going to respect myself and how am I going to teach people to respect me when they're not going to respect me because I'm not respecting myself? Right, so, and that's one of the things that I was taught growing up. My father always used of, uh, this thing that said, if you listen long enough somebody's got a story to tell so just listen just yeah. listen they're going to tell you and and that was always it didn't matter it didn't matter who you were what position you had um you know what your career was or anything else you just listen to their story and they because there are people that won't make eye, eye contact with other people they're afraid of them but you know reaching out and helping people next to you the best you can is what it's all about for me. Oh, it is. And, and, and what we've learned how to do in our program, our job is to be an artist as a mentor. And then when I mean an artist, my job is to paint a picture so they can see. Yep. It doesn't matter whether I see it, I already see it. But right. they got to see it because once they see it, then they can change it. Right. Then they can start taking control. So in order to be a man of integrity, you got to respect yourself and others. And then you got to establish new standards. This is what I'll do. This is what I won't do. This is how I walk. This is how I talk. And again, it goes back to the fundamentals. Right. You know, I can say I'm this, but if I'm not doing those things, how am I going to be that? Right. And that's why I, I totally, like I said, when I was giving you your name and I started doing a little bit about it, um, it was the standard that you set, not just for yourself, man. That's not what it's about. No, you, no. You empower everybody around you. You inspire them to be better people. And, um, you know, it was just incredible. I mean, when I did a little bit of backstory on it and wanted to know uh, who you were as a person, not, not about the football career, not about that. I wanted to know who you were as a person. And I was just, I was impressed with all aspects of it. And just, you know, like you said, reaching out and helping everybody, going into the prison or the jails and talking to people. I, I, I love that. Uh, it's one of the things I love and I, I haven't been able to do it. I, I love going to the juvenile detention center. Right. And working with the kids, I usually go every Tuesday uh, when we can, when, you know, and uh, it's so funny because you go in there and, and, and I say this and, and, and I hope this comes out right. It, 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 I don't want to make it. I was that kid that grew up um, domestic violence, mom and dad fight all the time. Dad was a Green Bay soldier. Uh, they taught him how to kill, didn't teach him how to be a dad. But I realized my dad taught me some incredible stuff just in a messed up way. You know, he, 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 that's what we learned. And, and I grew up in the South, the black-white issue. But at an early age, I said I'd be a football player, and I threw everything into that. Um, at 17, my mom shot my dad twice because she got tired of the craziness. And, that, and that's why I went to, from North Carolina to Kansas, where I, I didn't know a soul, and played football, and, and got cut, did every odd job, got every odd job, finally made it in the NFL at, 80, at age uh, in 1987, with the 49ers go there and win two Super Bowls with those guys play with Joe Montana, the, the, some of the greatest players to ever play the game. Right. I got to sit and watch them. It wasn't just about playing football. I got to sit and watch who they were. Right. Then I come to Green Bay and you got Brad, Reggie. I come with Mike Holmgren and, and that staff. And then, you know, we win another Super Bowl, go through a divorce, meet an incredible lady, get married. We've been married now for 23 years. And when I got fired, the Ray Road staff, you know, you get fired. And, and so I joined a financial planning firm. And so one day I walked in there and looked in the mirror and had no clue who I was. I had no clue. And then I, so I went for a long walk and I, and I wind up calling a buddy of mine that was a psychiatrist I'd met over the travels. 
And one of the first things he said to me was, Harry, how, did, how do you feel? And in my head, I go, what does matter is how I feel, man. This is where I'm at. Right. And so I went for a long walk, and I, I, and I got a degree in criminality and juvenile justice. I was part of the task force in San Francisco to stop the, that stopped the gang violence around Candlestick. Um, so I've always been kind of paid attention. And I knew my life, and I wish when I was growing up that I had somebody that I can call, somebody to talk to right. that said, hey, man, look, here's what's going on. You know, and, and so you look back at all your different life and then so we you get fired from uh, coaching with the Packers and then a week you got to turn your car in and everything changes. Oh, Every, everything changes. And so, like I said, I joined financial planning and then one day after walking out, went for a long walk, cried, did a lot of different things, soul search. And, and when my, that guy asked, said, well, Harry, how do you feel? Something clicked in my head. And then that clicked in my head, man, I go, dude, I got a lot of stories. Guys want to come in and talk about prejudice. I grew up in the South. I understand KKK. I understand prejudice. I understand drinking the different water fountains. Uh, success, disappointment. I understand what it's like being cut. I understand when somebody tells you all your life that's your dream and they say you're not good enough. I understand working at Quick Trip and I understand working in the grocery store. I understand not having it. But then I also changed things and I started understanding having it. So all of a sudden I realized that there's not many things that I can't have an honest opinion about. And we, and so I came home and told my wife and I said, babe, I think I, I know what I'm gonna do. We're gonna open a program called My Brother's Keeper and, and help boys and men. And that's the one thing you, you realize when you're with the right person, right? when she, when all she says is okay. Okay, yes, exactly. Okay. Yep, okay. I, you know, I got the links. I'm gonna be putting it up on all the social media stuff so they can look into your program, My Brother's Keeper in Green Bay. and and do all that and you know you go from uh you know high school athlete to forklift driver cut by the nfl coaching staffs and fired and everything else and you're going to leave a legacy of the greatest one and that's a mentor and it's just it's an incredible honor to sit down with you i really appreciate it well i i appreciate it and it's the, the cool thing about that is over 17 years man we've met some incredible people and, and the cool part about that a lot of these people because our whole thing is, I'm not going to work harder than you. Right. I'm going to lay it out there. We're going to talk about a game plan, but you got to, I'm going to be your cheerleader. Right. But you also have to understand, just because you do the right thing doesn't mean the band's going to play. Right, exactly. Oh, and, that's, and, that's, and, and that's the part of life. And so what we really help our boys and men is do is help them make the best life they can. Right. Because we've been, unfortunately, there's a myth that goes around and it says when we were growing up, and, and, and the greatest thing about our program is I'm about as politically, got to sneeze, <coughs> I'm about as politically correct as, as, as there is. And that's one of the reasons I, uh, we don't work with a lot of other programs because I don't want any other program to tell me what I can and can't say. Exactly. Well, and that's so, what you and I talked about this, man. It's just going to be no script. And just two guys chatting, and yeah, I just wanted to bring light to my brother's keeper. I just thought it was such a great organization. I'm just a dude that lives in Rice Lake, Wisconsin, that said, you know what, I got a, uh, you know, a computer, and uh, I'm gonna reach out. I call your desk, front desk. Your wife answers the phone, and you call me back in a little while, and you, and you probably would have went right to the phone, but you were doing something. But it's just incredible. I mean, just a a person, not just a faith, man. It's not, a, it's not about being even a faithful or having faith, but you just are extending your, yourself out there. Well, it's, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that to those that, and a lot of times my, my wife will say, well, we're so blessed. We are so blessed, but we also work damn hard. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> perseverance man we work we work hard we grind it i grind it she grind it we work to put ourselves and, and so what i what, what i just tell guys is man it's not about where you came from it's about where you're going right. and it's about helping guys decide the best course right. i mean i have guys that come in my office man young kids 11 12 13 years old all 120 pounds and i'll say what do you want to do when you grow up and they said i want to be a professional athlete that ain't happening <laughs> that ain't happening that thing that you can be anything that you want at any time? No, it's not, it's not really the truth. So we got to set realistic goals. And so a lot of times we work with our clients is setting realistic goals on who you can become. 
Right. Stop, stop be trying to be that when you know damn well there's no way in hell you can be that, but you can be the best you. Right. And a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah. I sit through a lot of stuff. And the thing that we talk a lot about is moving the needle and just being better every single day, whatever it is, whatever, you know, you can chase whatever you're going to chase. But well, that, that's why our fourth one, after being a man of integrity, respect and living standards, then you got to be disciplined. Right. You got to be disciplined. You got to be disciplined to every decision. Ask yourself, is that making a man of integrity? Then hold yourself accountable to the answer because that's your responsibility. And if you do that, you're controlling the one thing that you can't control, and that's yourself. Right. That's yourself. Yeah, and everybody wants to, that's all you want. And my job is to help guys do that. Help. help. And it's such a, a reward, man. I got guys that now are getting married. I got guys that had lost people in their family and now they've moved on. I got kids of dads that have come to me. I have guys that come every three months just for an oil change. Yeah. Well, I love your passion, man. I do. It, it's, it, you know, I, I wish I can say it was, it's just what we do. It's what I am. I mean, I, you know, I'm the guy that, and it's unfortunately my, my, when I go to place with my wife, you know, I'm the guy that has to watch what he says because I always want to say what I feel. And, and, and what I realized, just because you want to say it, don't mean you can say it. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why we decided to record this, just because yeah. neither one yeah. of us have much of a filter. So No, no. And, and, and I, you know, here's the thing. I believe in pretty much what I say. Um, um, and, I, and I try to treat people fair and respectful. But at the same time, you know, there's certain rules I have. There's certain, you know, you, you want to push my button, okay. I'm going to handle it different. I might think about things differently, but I'm going to tell you what I feel. Right. And that, but that's, again, but that's, you know, the guys that you deal with, the, the kids all the way up, as a mentor, you have to be real with them. You have to look them in the eye and say, this is what I need from you, because you're the one that, at the end of the day, you got to be held accountable for what your actions are. Yeah, you, you, you have to. And even though there might be extenuating, extenuating circumstances, it really doesn't matter. Right. You still have to catch yourself. There, like I said, there's reasons. I mean, growing up, uh, yeah, it was my background, crazy family, all that stuff, you know, proud black family that everybody thought when you locked the door at night, you'd keep the monster out. But when we locked it, we kept it in. Yeah. <laughs> you know, everybody has stuff. Everybody has family that, you know, it just is. But it's how you handle that. Because that's what you can control. And, and so much of our life, we spend a lot of times worrying about the unknown. Right. We worry right. about the unknown. But the thing about it is, if you know how you're going to handle things, it doesn't matter what the unknown is, because you're going to do the known. That's right. That's right. But we get yeah, so I, caught up in the unknown. <laughs> I, it is such a pleasure to meet you. Harry Sidney. My brother's keeper, Green Bay, Wisconsin. You got to check it out. All right, I really appreciate it, Harry. I do, and when I and I'm hoping the golf tournament is is held this year because I've been playing there the last. I come up to Rice Lake, play over there at, at uh, uh, was it Turtle Turtleback? Turtleback, yeah. Turtleback, go play nice course and play there. State hotel, you know, it's it's a nice thing that you do because one golf tournament take care of a lot of fun, a lot a lot of uh, nonprofits. Right. To raise money so, so not everybody's fighting and, and, and not everybody's feeling nickel and dime to death. Right. I know. So it's, it's a great, it's great thing, and I'm hoping that things work out and I get back up there. So well, one of these days we're going to meet face-to-face. -face. I want to shake your hand. Hey, shake my hand, and I'll, I'll even let you buy me a, a whiskey and diet. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine with me. There That's you go. That's fine with me. Thank you, sir. It's a, it's a pleasure. Thank you.